Sergio was sitting on a chair. In front of him, on the table, there was a bottle of vodka and a filled to the brim shot glass. The man took a deep breath and quickly downed the shot. He nibbled on an apple and then refilled the glass. Once again, emptying it while biting into the red fruit. At that moment, he dreamed of one thing, to forget everything that troubled him. But he couldn't achieve that. Instead, a picture of his entire life formed in his thoughts, and he surrendered to those memories. The man was a ward of an orphanage. He couldn't remember his parents as he ended up in the institution when he was very young. His mother had rejected him at the maternity hospital, and in the orphanage, Sergio fell in love for the first time in fourth grade with a classmate named Jessica. The girl welcomed his advances and liked that he stood up for her when other classmates pulled her pigtails. Several years passed. Sergio and Jessica moved on to the tenth grade. They were always together, and the staff of the orphanage had long believed that this pair was destined to be together. Meanwhile, Sergio and Jessica made plans for the future. The girl said to her chosen one, "We need to get into a higher education institution once we leave the shelter. No one will help us. We will be on our own." But I can't afford higher education. You are the one doing my homework for me. You are a good student, but I'm not," Sergio replied. "I'm talking about legalizing our relationship first. And no children for now. Agreed? You are so cunning. If you don't agree, I won't marry you. Fine, I agree. No children for now." The day came when they left the orphanage building. And the government provided each of them with a one-bedroom apartment on the outskirts of the city. This fact didn't bother the young couple. They immediately decided to live in one apartment and rent out the other. Sergio enrolled in a technical college to become an auto mechanic, while his chosen one entered the university with the dream of becoming a math teacher. The couple legalized their relationship and became a small, close kin's family. Money was naturally tight, as both received small stipends, and the income from the second apartment they rented out was not significant. Sergio took to initiative. How about I get a job as a loader? I will work part time in the evenings. It will bring in a bit more money. That is not a bad idea, actually. I will find out everything tomorrow. I love you. I love you too, very much. But Sergio didn't succeed in finding a job. Everywhere they needed full-time loaders, which he couldn't afford because he was studying during the day. The young family was at a loss. They literally didn't have enough money for basic necessities. One evening, while Jessica was darning socks, Sergio suddenly exclaimed with joy. There's an ad for a security guard. Just read it. One evening, with those words, he handed the newspaper to his wife. Do you think they will hire you? They might say you are still too young for such a job. Believe in me, and everything will be fine. Well, we will see. The next day, Sergio skipped his classes. He really wanted to get this job. He called the base. And they invited him for an interview. Sergio tried to persuade them to hire him. He bribed the authorities with information about their needs for money. Please understand, my wife and I are from the orphanage. We recently got married, and it's her birthday soon. I want to give her a television as a gift, as we don't have one. It is almost funny not to have a television nowadays. Other people have two houses, and we don't even have one. And Sergio was hired. The young man walked home in a great mood. He was eager to delight his beloved. He already imagined how he would give the gift to his wife. Sergio even stopped by an appliance store to check the prices of televisions. When he arrived home, he didn't mention to his wife that he had skipped classes. He approached Jessica gently, 
embraced her by the waist and said, I got the job. Really? The young woman clapped her hands in delight. You are like a little child. Well, never mind. Listen, how will you manage your studies if you don't get enough sleep? It is okay. I will try to keep up with everything. I won't be working every day. Schedule is convenient. Two days of work, two days off. Well, okay. Let me prepare dinner now. The next day, Sergio went to work for the first time. He did just as he had planned. With his first paycheck, he bought the cheapest television, spending almost all of his earnings on it. The financial situation of the young couple improved slightly. Time passed. Sergio completed his education and started working at an automobile service station in his field. He quit his job as a security guard, and Jessica continued her studies, eagerly awaiting her husband when she returned from the university. It was customary in their family to share what happened during the day with each other. Years flew by unnoticed. Jessica also graduated from the university and immediately found a job. She was eager to teach children. Sergio noticed that his wife enjoyed going to work, but he decided to remind her of their old agreement. Remember, my law, you told me that we wouldn't plan for children during your studies, but now the time has come. It is time for a child's voice to fill our family. Sergio, wait a bit. Let's settle down and earn some money first. How do you plan to feed the baby? Well, you will have your own milk, but sometimes it doesn't work out. All right, let's wait just a little longer. Exactly one year after the conversation, Jessica gave birth to a girl whom they named the beautiful name Tiffany. The young parents couldn't be happier. The child's father said to his wife, "We chose a very beautiful name for our girl. I like it too. She will definitely participate in dancing or some other activity. Why dancing? Let her take karate. She is a girl. Karate is for boys. Then the next one in line in our family will be a boy. Let our daughter grow up first." Jessica laughed happily. Time flew by when Jessica took care of the baby. It wouldn't be accurate to say that everything went smoothly. There were times when their daughter fell ill and tantrums ensued, but the child cried. Sergio endured sleepless nights and went to work in the morning with red, sleep-deprived eyes. Soon their daughter reached the age of three, and the parents immediately decided that she needed to interact with peers. They enrolled their little girl in a daycare center, and Jessica returned to work about a year later. In order to improve the family's financial situation, Jessica started working as a tutor on the side. Initially, Sergio was against it. You will be going who knows where, and I will worry about you at home. Don't worry, all the lessons will take place at our home. When a student comes. You and Tiffany can spend an hour in the kitchen. Well, if that's the case, then I agree. Wonderful. I love you. To keep up with this pose in terms of earning money, Sergio also started working on the sides. In addition to his main job, he repaired cars outside of the service station. Together, in a harmonious tandem, they managed to restore the family's financial balance. When Tiffany turned five, the family decided that it was time to merge two apartments together. Therefore, their desire to exchange two one-bedroom apartments for a two-bedroom apartment. In due course, they moved into what seemed to be luxurious new apartments. At the time, Sergio once again brought up the topic of having a second child. He dreamed of having a son, honey. The time has come, isn't it? About time we had a little brother for Tiffany. I will think about your proposal. Let's create a miracle tonight, right now. Now, now, Jessica laughed. She will be pregnant. 
Upon hearing these words, Sergio embraced his wife. Jessica was grateful to her husband. She loved him with all her heart and knew that he loved her just as sincerely. A year after the birth of their second daughter, the couple exchanged their two-bedroom apartments for a three-bedroom apartment with the help of government assistance. When Adelaida turned three, she was enrolled in daycare and Jessica returned to work once again. The family now had the opportunity to save money. They dreamed of buying a car. Two years later, Sergio took out a loan and added their accumulated savings, bought a car. Everything was going well for the family, except for one misfortune. One day, Jessica felt unwell. She managed to work through the day somehow and came home looking tired. She felt an overwhelming fatigue. She didn't even have the strength to prepare dinner, so she lay down. Sergio came home and saw his wife in this state, becoming concerned. Are you okay? Yes, just feeling weak. Maybe I caught a cold. I will have to cancel tutoring for a week, but I will make that call tomorrow. Maybe it is not a cold, just fatuk. You know, I don't like this. Let's measure your temperature. No needs, I just want to rest. Please prepare dinner for me. Right, my dear. Sergio looked worriedly at his wife, gently stroked her hands, and headed to the kitchen. He glanced at the clock and shook his head. Children were running late. Just as the children were running late, he thought about it. The front door swung open, and 16-year-old Tiffany and 7-year-old Adelaida rushed into the apartment, laughing. Sergio went to meet them and addressed them. Girls, please be quiet. Mom is not feeling well. What is wrong with mom? The older daughter asked anxiously. I will go to mom. Adelia shoot it. Don't disturb her. It is better to wash your hands and help dad with the dinner. The children obediently ran off to wash their hands. Tiffany was the first one who washed her hands and quietly sneaked into her parents' bedroom. She saw her mom lying on her back, her forehead covered in sweets. Mom, what is wrong with you? Are you feeling sick? Oh, sweetheart, is that you? I was school. Were you at dance practice? Mom, you didn't answer me. I have been everywhere, Tiffany. I'm just a little tired, feeling a bit under the weather. I will take a nap and it will pass. Where are Adelaide and Dad? They're in the kitchen preparing dinner. Go and help them too, okay? With those words, the girl ran off to the kitchen. When Tiffany approached her father and younger sister, she immediately said that she didn't like her mother's condition. Sergio attentively looked at his eldest daughter and then silently headed to the bedroom. Seeing his wife in such a state, he felt pity. Sergio took a towel and wiped the sweat of his wife's face. Jessica felt the touch and opened her eyes. She smiled wearily and asked in a soft voice, What is for dinner tonight? Pasta with seafoods and vegetable salad. A very simple dinner. Listen, let's call an ambulance. I don't like your condition, Sergio firmly replied. No need for an ambulance. The wife categorically responded, Dinner will be ready soon. I will bring it here for you. I don't want to eat. You and the girls have dinner without me. All right, let me rest. Tell the girls good night for me. Sergio kissed his wife and left the room. He understood that his wife was sick and tomorrow he needed to convince her to see a doctor. He went to the kitchen, helped his daughters finish preparing dinner and then they sat down at the table. He told the children that their mom was not feeling well and had gone to bed earlier, wishing everyone a good night. Jessica had a restless night's sleep, and Sergio couldn't fall asleep for a long time either. He managed to fall asleep only toward morning. At 6 am, he woke up and looked at his wife. He didn't like her appearance. Then he went to the kitchen, put the kettle on and pondered. He immediately decided that his wife wouldn't go to work today and would go directly to the hospital. 
Then, Sergio changed his plans. I will wake up the girls now so that they can get ready for school. I will call my boss and ask for a day off, and I will take Jessica to the hospital myself. These thoughts unintentionally slipped out of his mouth when the alarm clock rang at seven o'clock. Sergio entered the girls' room. He kissed each one and said cheerfully, "Morning has come, so it is time for everyone to get up." The girls reluctantly woke up. They still wanted to sleep, but they knew that their father wouldn't leave until he had gotten them out of the bed. Only their mom allowed them to stay in a bed a little longer. So yawning, they got up. "Good morning, Dad. Good morning to you too. Go wash your faces." How is Mom feeling? Tiffany asked. I will take her to the hospital soon, and you will go to school on your own today, Sergio said as he headed to the bedroom where his wife wasn't sleeping anymore. He gently kissed her, fixed her hair, and informed her that she would get up now, get ready, and they would go to the hospital. Jessica wanted to object, but her husband didn't allow her to do so. Please. Don't contradict me, not now," he said. Jessica looked tenderly at her husband and agreed with his decision. Deep down, she understood that she wasn't feeling well, and she couldn't even understand the cause of it. Within forty minutes, the couple was driven to the hospital. Sergio obtained a ticket to see the general practitioner at the medical facility. At the appointed time, Jessica went in to see the doctor. After a while, she came out holding a stack of papers. Sergio realized that she had been asked to undergo some tests. The couple headed home. Jessica was already on sick leave, and he had called his boss in the morning and took the day off. On the way back, Sergio and his wife stopped at a store and bought a cake. When he got back into the car, his wife asked with surprise, "What celebration do we have today?" It doesn't seem like anyone's birthday. Can't we just enjoy a delicious cake like this? He replied. Of course we can. So let's celebrate an ordinary day today. And the couple drove home. As soon as they entered the apartment, Sergio went straight to boil the kettle. He wanted to uplift his beloved's mood since he could see that she was feeling down. Jessica changed into comfortable home clothes and sat down. She didn't feel like eating or drinking anything. Her head was aching, and her body felt weak. When Sergio came in with a tray containing mugs of aromatic drink and two plates with slices of cake, he saw that his wife had fallen asleep. He took the treads back to the kitchen, returned to his wife, and carefully covered her with a blanket. The next day, Sergio went to work. And Jessica called a taxi to go to the hospital and have the prescribed tests done. Gathering her strength, she prepared soap and pasta to ensure the family was fed. Afterwards, she realized that she was extremely tired. This surprised her since she hadn't engaged in any physical labor. Jessica lay down to rest. At that moment, her mobile phone rang. "Darling, did you get the test results?" her husband called. Yes, of course. What do you do when I'm not around? I prepared lunch. Now I'm laying down to rest in a bit before doing some household chores. No chores. Just relax, love. See you in the evening. I love you too. Jessica hung up the phone and closed her eyes. She fell asleep. That is how her husband found her when he came home from work. He didn't wake her up. He only wanted one thing. For his blood to recover quickly, eventually the seeker received the test results and a referral to an oncologist. She was emotionally overwhelmed. Thoughts were swirling in her head. Why did this happen to her? They had led to a healthy lifestyle with her husband. Jessica returned from the hospital feeling sad. She didn't know how to break the news to her spouse. When she got home, she sat in the kitchen and burst into desperate tears. After some time, she calmed down, washed her face, and started thinking about how to tell her husband about her illness. But she couldn't come up with anything. Her husband returned home and found her in the bedroom where she was looking at the family album with photographs. 
Sergio stared at the Jessica in confusion. Wow, such sentimentality. Yeah, I decided to look at the photos. Look at me, please. Sergio knew his wife too well, and her voice sounded sorrowful. Jessica looked into the face of her beloved. What happened? Did you cry today? Why? I didn't cry. Don't deceive me. Wait. Today you were supposed to pick up the test results. What did the doctor say? Jessica looked at her husband for a few minutes, but he insisted that she tell him everything. In a quiet voice, she recounted the story of her visit to the hospital, then pointed to her handbag, indicating that the referral was inside. Sergio hurried to retrieve the medical documents. He silently read it, then looked at his wife. A lump formed in his throat. Clearing his throat, he said, "Did you schedule an appointment with the doctor?" Yes, well done. When the first realization came, Sergio understood that now he needed to not talk about it, but to support his blood. The man embraced his wife as he stroked her shoulders. He began to whisper tenderly, "Darling, this is not a death sentence. There are many people who suffer from this condition. Don't overthink it. You know how powerful our medicine is. Everything will be fine. You are a strong person." We have been able to overcome various situations together, and we will endure this unpleasantness. As you know, what I say happens. Do you believe me? Yes, I believe you. Jessica whispered quietly in response, then smiled, and no more tears, sweetheart. Please don't tell the girls. They don't need to know anything for now. I won't. Besides, you will get better soon. Sergio had only heard about this illness in passing, but he strongly believed in his own words and did not entertain negative thoughts about it. At that appointed time, Jessica appeared before an oncologist who prescribed a bunch of tests. Once again, she took them and received a referral for hospitalization. From that moment on, Sergio and Jessica's family life changed. Sergio was torn between work and trips to the hospital to see his wife. The household duties fell on their eldest daughter, Tiffany. She did the laundry, cooked meals, and helped her younger sister with homework. The father was grateful to his daughter and said to her, "What would I do without you?" "Dad, can I ask you something?" "Yes, tell me." "What is wrong with mom? Is it serious? You don't even take us to see her, but I want to see her. I would go myself, but I don't know which hospital she is in." Sergio deliberately kept when Jessica was lying. He didn't want to traumatize the children. Moreover, he had an agreement with his wife not to tell anything to the girls. Therefore, in this situation, he didn't know how to answer Tiffany. But the girl persistently asked, "Dad, let's be honest. I am not that little. Please tell me. I won't tell my sister." Sergio had no choice but to truthfully tell about the situation that had arisen. As he spoke, looking out the window, tears rolled down Tiffany's eyes. She didn't want to accept the reality of the situation and unexpectedly burst into tears. Sergio fell silent and pulled his eldest daughter closer to him. "We will manage, trust me. I told that to mom too. Are you being honest? Have I ever lied to you? I love you." You my loves, know that I love you. I love all of you too. The doctors in the hospital didn't provide any guarantees. After some time, Jessica was discharged. Sergio was given a list of medications to purchase. The medical treatments were costly, but Sergio borrowed money from friends, gathered small family savings, and bought the medicines. However, the treatment didn't help. The man was in shock. The doctors advised taking his wife to a private clinic in the capital, explaining that there were better chances of curing her there. Sergio knew that it required money, which he didn't have. He agonized over finding a solution. Jessica saw how much her husband was suffering, even though he didn't show it outwardly. He tried his best to ensure that his beloved didn't worry. Sergio wanted his wife to smile more. So he would tell funny stories in the evenings, which he made up himself. The children also encouraged their mother. And one day, when Tiffany was alone with her mother, she said, "I want to confess something to you, my dear mom. 
I think I'm in love. Well, that's wonderful. I hope he's a good guy. Yes, he's a very good. He's one year older than me. Daughter, I hope you haven't been intimate. Of course not, only after marriage. I want us to have what you and dad have. A great love for a lifetime. You are speaking wisely. I am happy for you. And what is his name? Terence. Jessica looked at her daughter, and in her thoughts, one thing was pounding. Her little girl had grown up and would soon leave their family. But she was proud of her daughter. She and her husband had raised Tiffany well. Adelida would be the same under their guidance. With her husband Sergio, realizing that he wouldn't find help for his wife in their hometown, made the decision to take her to the capital. He had paid off the previous loan for their car, so he took out another loan. He arranged his own vacation time at work. He gave instructions to his eldest daughter as she would be staying home alone with her sister for the first time. Tiffany, you are already grown up. You will be in charge at home. Don't do anything foolish. That I know everything. I will be turning 18 soon, so don't worry, you go. We need to save our mom. I'm counting on you. A few days later, with their medical records, Sergio and his wife traveled to the capital. He went to the private clinic recommended by a doctor from their hometown. The professor at the hospital studied the medical history and gave an huge cost. Sergio wasn't expecting that. They had told him the clinic was expensive, but he didn't anticipate such high prices. The man offered the doctor a partial payment. Here, I have this amount. Can you start a treatment? I will bring you the rest in a few days. Sergio was willing to do anything to save his wife. He even found a solution for where to get the money. He would sell the car. Understand one thing, Sergio. The professor replied. I am not a magician and I can't offer any guarantees. I understand that you can't work miracles, Sergio said. But I will know that I have done everything possible. Alright, I will admit your wife to the hospital and I will wait for the money. Just write a promissory note stating that you will pay the remaining amount. Alright, I will write it, Sergio said. Sergio left with a heavy heart, knowing that he had to sell the car within a short time. It wouldn't be easy to find a buyer at a high price, and he needed the money urgently. With these thoughts, he returned to their hometown. His daughters welcomed him home, worried about the situation. Sergio explained everything in detail. The next day, he put the car up for sale. There weren't many buyers, and time was running out for payments. It was for this reason that he sold the car at a very low price, but he had no choice. He transferred the received amount to the account provided by the professor. The waiting days felt agonizing. Sergio called his wife almost every day, trying to uplift her spirits. But one conversation didn't sit well with him. My love, everything will be fine. You believe me, don't you? Sergio, don't say that. You know the truth yourself. I don't have much time left. It would be better if you took me away from here. At least I will be with you and see your faces. Stop talking like that. We haven't even met our grandchildren yet or granddaughter. You will have to wait for them without me. Jessica, don't talk nonsense. I'm begging you. After that conversation, Sergio became scared. What if something irreversible happens? He tried to push these thoughts away, but they kept coming back. His daughter's voice distracted him from the sorrowful thoughts as she called him for dinner. Two weeks later, they received a call from the clinic saying that Jessica could be taken home. Sergio was relieved. That meant everything was fine. However, one thought saddened him. They had no money, couldn't turn to friends, and he was already in debt. He decided to ask his boss for a small sum. Winston, there's something I need to do. I have to bring my wife back from the clinic, but you know about my situation. Can you lend me some money until payday? Of course, the boss took out some bills and counted the necessary amounts. Sergio left for the capital with his wife. He had missed her so much. 
When have I become so weak? He wondered. He entered the clinic, met the professor. We invited him for a conversation in his office. The doctor said they had done everything possible, but the illness was stronger than medicine. Then the doctor handed him several prescriptions, explaining that these medications would help alleviate the pain. Sergio couldn't believe what he was hearing. He quietly asked, "When? What do you mean when? How long? I am not the Lord. I can't say. Does Jessica know about this? No." Sergio left the office. He didn't know how to look into the eyes of his beloved wife after hearing everything, but he found the strength within himself and, with a smile, proceeded to her room. He saw a greatly weakened Jessica, already dressed and waiting for him. She tried to stand up, but she didn't have the strength. She said softly, "I have become so weak within these walls. Then we will take care of you at home until the end, my dear." Sergio lifted Jessica in his arms and left the hospital with her. They arrived home. When their daughters eagerly awaited their mother and father, they expected to see a happy couple and froze when they saw their father carrying their mother in his arms. To lighten the mood, the man exclaimed, "Where's your joy? We are all back home together." Tiffany was the first to realize. She shouted, "Hooray! Mom is back!" Meanwhile. Sergio laid Jessica down on the couch. The daughters rushed to her, hugging and kissing her. The woman cried, longing for her girls. The man watched the reunion between the mother and children, thinking about how to tell them that they would soon be separated forever. Suddenly, Sergio heard Jessica's voice. "Girls, I'm tired." Sergio noticed that his wife was trying to hide severe pain. He asked the daughters to leave their mother. Saying that she was tired from the journey and needed the rest, Tiffany understood the situation. However, Adelaida didn't want to leave her mother. She wanted to share so much about her life that her mother didn't know. The older sister called out, "Adelaida, come with me. I will let you play on my phone." All right, let's go. The sister followed Tiffany. The man approached his wife and stroked her hair. He pondered. His wife needed medication. But they had no money. There was nothing left to sell. He owed money to too many people. There was only one option left: to take out another loan. Sergio took out another loan. He distributed half of it to acquaintances he borrowed from, and the remaining part was spent on medication. The medical supplies were enough for a month. He was bewildered. He had to pay back two loans. Where would he find the finances? When his wife needed medication, Sergio decided to take out yet another loan. Meanwhile, Jessica was slowly fading away. The smile vanished from her face. She had no strength to speak. Even the youngest daughter understood that her mother was terminally ill. Adelaida comforted Tiffany, and she and their father asked the younger girl to cry more quietly. Don't cry loudly. Mom will worry because of that, and she shouldn't. Those words immediately had an effect on the child. She loved her mother very much and didn't want her to worry. So the girl wiped away her tears and gradually calmed down. Jessica didn't live to see Tiffany's 18th birthday, only less than a month. Although Sergio was prepared for the fatal outcome, the reality struck him. He couldn't hold back his tears. The man realized that at the moment he became an orphan. His beloved woman would never say to him again. Good morning, my dear. Many people came to bid farewell to the deceased woman, including Winston. Many positive words were spoken about Jessica, and numerous wreaths and flowers were laid. A month had passed since Jessica's funeral. Sergio tried to continue living his life. He mechanically went to work, returned home, and in the evenings sat next to a photo of his wife. Gazing at her face, Tiffany could see that her father was suffering greatly. So she approached him and said, "That you are not the only one grieving for mom. Adelaida and I also mourning. But we have to keep living. We can't give up." "Yes, I know," the father abstains mildly replies. "We need to do something about the debts. The electricity bill has arrived." Says that electricity will be cut off soon if it's not paid. And look, two letters from the bank. Yes, I know. 
Why do you keep saying the same thing, Dather? I promise that tomorrow I will take care of it. Right now, I want to be alone. Tiffany shook her head and left her father alone with his thoughts. The next day, Sergio pondered how to solve the financial problem. He couldn't take out another loan, as he already had several. The only idea that came to mind was to approach his boss and ask to work without any days off. Hello, Winston. I need to have a serious conversation with you. Come in, have a seat. I'm listening attentively. You see, I'm going through a difficult situation in my life right now. I'm drowning in debt. They threatened to cut off the electricity due to non-payment. Can you allow me to work without any days off? The pay won't be significant, but it's still something. All right, work without days off. Let me give you some money to pay off all your obligations to others, and you will owe only me, but with interest. Are you serious? Yes, just write an acknowledgement of debt with witnesses. I agree. With the money he received, Sergio paid off all his debts. Now he had only one creditor, his boss. Tiffany knew about this arrangement. She was glad about it, but at the same time, saddened because her father worked without any days off. He would leave for work at six in the morning and return home around eight in the evening. The girl knew that this couldn't go on for long. She even started looking for a job herself to help her father repay the debts. However, in their city, it was difficult to find employment. That's when Tiffany suggested, "Dad, talk to your boss. Maybe he can hire me as a cleaner. I won't start university until next year. I can earn some money now." All right, I will talk to him. Sergio agreed. Sergio approached his boss with the request, and surprisingly, he quickly agreed. The next day, Tiffany started working. She had been working for three days already. She enjoyed going to work, and her thoughts were focused solely on helping her father in any way she could. After a week, her father informed her that their boss had a birthday and he had contributed. She enjoyed going to work. The amount for both of them was given as a gift. Then he asked, "Tomorrow at six in the evening, there will be a celebration. Will you go?" "I'm not sure." The boss invited everyone. "If you don't go," It might be seen as disrespectful. In my opinion, Tiffany agreed with her father's arguments. So at the appointed time, she sat with her another in honor of the birthday celebrants. Tiffany watched the festivities, but then she decided to go to the restroom. On her way back, she overheard a conversation between two men, one of whom was her father, and the other was his boss, Sergio. We have known each other for a long time. I remember your daughter when she was little, and now she has become such a beauty. I can't take my eyes off her. Yes, she takes after her mother. Equally beautiful. Listen, why don't you give her to me as a gift? What do you mean, give her? The man was surprised. Well, sell her to me, and I will forgive your debts, and I will give you a written acknowledgement. Are you out of your mind to sell my own daughter? Sergio angrily replies. In response, he heard, "Well, I wouldn't think about the offer if I were you. After all, time is passing, and you have to repay the money. Otherwise, you might regret it, and you have another daughter. Think about it." Sergio hurried past Tiffany without noticing her. He rushed into the hall, searching for his daughter. Not finding her, he shouted her name. Tiffany emerged from her hiding spot. Her father spoke sternly. Stating that they were leaving the celebration, the girl didn't argue with her father. She was herself bewildered by what she had heard and understood her father's feelings. When they arrived home, her father sat from the doorstep. Tiffany, you are no longer working there. I know. I overheard your entire conversation. You didn't even ask for the reasons. How could you hear him? I was coming back from the restroom and overheard a conversation. Where my name was mentioned, so I stopped to listen. Well, that's for the best. There's no need for me to explain anything to you. Then Sergio heard a speech from his own daughter. She was asking him to agree to the deal. 
he was bewildered. Tiffany simply explained that they couldn't easily escape the situation they were in and their boss was an influential person. She pleaded with her father to think about their future, about her and her younger sister. Sergio angrily told her to go to bed, but Tiffany said, Mom would agree with my decision to live peacefully, and I know she hears me from heaven, blessing my act for our sake. Tiffany left, and Sergio sat there thinking. He couldn't sleep all night. In the morning, he told Tiffany that he would do as she asked. And now Sergio was in the office. I agreed to the deal. You can have my daughter, and in return, you forgive all my debts. Give me back the written acknowledgement. Deal, that is the right decision. After she made a deal, Tiffany went to her boss's house for the night. She returned in the morning. Sergio, as soon as he saw his daughter's face, was shocked. She looked indifferently through him. The girl took off her coat, and her father understood everything at a glance. Tiffany's clothes were torn. The daughter had not experienced sweet embraces and tender kisses that night. Her innocence had been trampled on in a boorish way. She softly muttered, Daddy, be quiet. Here is the acknowledgement and went into the bathroom. And now, Sergio was sitting at the table, drinking vodka to a word of all thoughts. He didn't know how he was going to live his life. After all, he himself had sold his daughter's honor. Thank you for joining us today on Deep Stories. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video.